Rocket Launching Technology In this lesson, we shall learn about rocket launching technology. Rockets are called launching vehicles as they carry artificial satellites from Earth to space. Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, Herman Oberth and Robert Goddard are known as fathers of modern rocketry. The working of rockets is based on Newton's third law of motion and the principle of conservation of momentum. According to the principle of conservation of momentum, the total momentum of the system is conserved when the net force acting on the system is zero. Consider the following case. Let mass of a bullet be M, mass of a rifle, capital M. Let the velocity of the bullet be V. Before firing, both the bullet and the rifle are at rest. So, total initial momentum is equal to zero. When the bullet is fired, the bullet leaves with a momentum equal to m v. The rifle recoils and moves with a velocity v. Total momentum after firing is equal to m v plus small m v. But we know that final momentum is equal to zero. So, m v plus Small mv is equal to 0 or mv is equal to minus mv. So, recoil velocity v of the gun is equal to minus mv upon m. A rocket works on the same principle. When a rocket is fired, the propellant burns and a large amount of gas is pushed out at high velocity. The ejected gas pushes the rocket with a high velocity in the opposite direction and the rocket acquires an equal momentum. Usually, planes and other aircrafts use atmospheric oxygen for combustion. But rockets operate in space, hence they carry an oxidizer. The mixture of oxidizer and fuel is called propellant. The oxidizer release oxygen that combines with the fuel to produce gas for propulsion. Propellants can be both solids as well as liquids. Solid fuels tend to produce lots of large particles and smoke. Thus liquid propellants are used. Some rocket propellants are liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, kerosene and liquid oxygen. Hydrazine and nitric acid, synthetic rubber or cellulose based compounds, and liquid oxygen. Polybutadiene, an acrylic acid with an oxidizer, such as aluminium percolate. The mass of a rocket includes the mass of propellants, scientific instruments, or the satellite in the rocket. The total weight of the scientific instruments or spacecrafts or Astronauts that an aircraft carries to planets or space is called payload. The ratio of payload mass to fuel mass is called payload ratio. For a rocket, the acceleration of the rocket is determined by the amount of fuel burned and the escape velocity. Acceleration of a rocket is also affected by mass. For a rocket, the rate of fuel consumption multiplied by exhaust velocity is equal to mass of the rocket multiplied by acceleration. The practical aspects that need to be considered when a rocket operates are the mass of a rocket goes on decreasing as it consumes fuel at every instance. As the rocket ascends, the acceleration due to gravity continuously changes. The lower stratum of the atmosphere offers resistance to the rocket. In a single stage rocket, the total thrust is imparted in a single phase, either by a single or a multiple thrust unit. 
In this type of rocket, combustion takes place in the engine and the exhaust gas comes out of the nozzle. The oxidizer and fuel are stored in separate tanks. But a single rocket cannot push an artificial satellite to a large height. In a multi-stage rocket, several rockets are joined together, one on top of the other, to provide necessary power. It uses two or more stages, each of which contains its own engines and a propellant. After certain heights, each stage of the rocket gets detached. This reduces the overall weight and also increases the efficiency of the rocket. The fuel consumption is also reduced in such rockets. The velocity of a satellite in a circular path is called the orbital velocity. VO. Centripetal force is needed for circular motion. If an artificial satellite is provided by the gravitational force of the Earth. Consider an artificial satellite of mass M going round in a circular orbit of radius R with velocity VO at a height h from the surface of Earth. Let the mass of the earth be m, then gravitational force Fg acting on the satellite will be equal to g multiplied by m multiplied by m upon r plus h whole square. Let it be equation 1. Here, g is the universal gravitation constant equal to 6.672 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton per meter square upon kilogram square. The centripetal force FCP required for circular motion of the satellite can be expressed as M multiplied by V O square upon R plus H. Let it be equation 2. From equations 1 and 2, we get M multiplied by V O square upon R plus H is equal to G multiplied by M multiplied by M upon R plus H square. So, V O square is equal to G multiplied by M upon R plus H. Or, V O is equal to square root of G multiplied by M upon R plus H. When the value of H is too small compared to R, the former can be ignored. So, VO is equal to square root of G multiplied by M upon R. Or, G is equal to G multiplied by M upon R square. Or, G multiplied by M upon R is equal to RG. So, the orbital velocity in terms of acceleration due to gravity G is VO equal to root of GR. The minimum velocity with which a body must be projected so that it escapes from the gravitational field of the earth is called escape velocity. Escape velocity VE can be calculated using the following formula. For Earth, radius R is equal to 6.37 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 meters and acceleration due to gravity G is 9.8 meter per second square. Here, escape velocity VE is equal to square root of 2 GR which is equal to square root of 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 6.37, multiplied by 10 to the power 6, which is equal to 11.2 kilometers per second. We know that orbital velocity VO is equal to square root of RG and escape velocity VE is equal to square root of 2RG. So, escape velocity is equal to square root of 2VO.